huge strategic emergency, which is now uh, becoming clear. In the last uh, 36 hours, we've had a fierce attack by Islamist militants in the capital of Chechnya, Chechnya, and about 20 are dead. These are um, Islamist suicide bombers, uh, and this event was timed to coincide with the State of Russia, State of the Nation uh, address, which Putin was holding then in the Kremlin. Uh, so this, you could see a, a big building in the center of town was seized. It was shot to pieces, burning, uh, damaged buildings all over the place uh, and so forth. So it is a huge challenge. And as we'll see, it's the third in the course of the, uh, the last year. I urge you to get out your copy of Obama, the Postmodern Coup, The Making of a Manchurian Candidate, 2008, by yours truly. Go to tarpley.net and order it immediately. In here, we find the story of Ilyas Akhmadov, the ambassador of the Chechen terrorist organization, which uh, had him as essentially an ambassador here in the United States, thanks to the tender care of Zbigniew Brzezinski and others. And, uh, of course, we remember that in the Boston bombing, Uncle Ruslan was married to the daughter of uh, Graham Fuller of the CIA, presumably one of the handlers of people coming from that neck of the woods. Just last year, we had Doku Umarov, Chechen terrorist leader, killed. And remember that his predecessor, as the boss of this entire thing, Basayev, was one of the most notorious CIA agents anywhere in the world. So I'm saying this because if you're reading this from the Russian point of view, when you see uh, Islamist crazies attacking in Chechnya, you think right away, CIA, MI6. And indeed, sure enough, let's see what, what Putin had to say about this in that uh, that speech that uh, did did go on right the show uh, did go on so let's just see a few things about um, this he says um, that he's talking about the policy of containment let me go go back to this Putin says concerning sanctions. Economic sanctions are not just a kind of ad hoc or knee-jerk reaction on behalf of the United States responding to the coup in Ukraine or the Crimean Spring, which was an answer to that. Putin says, I'm sure that if the Ukrainian events had never happened, if none of that had ever happened, the U.S. and the West would have come up with some other excuse to try to contain Russians grow, Russia's growing credibilities, affect our country in some way, or take advantage of it. The policy of containment was not invented yesterday. Remember, it was George Kennan, the pro-Nazi group in the State Department that launched it back in 1947 and 1948. Uh, I'm adding that. Policy of containment not new, carried out against Russia for many years, for decades, perhaps centuries. In short, Whenever someone thinks that Russia has become too strong or too independent, these tools are quickly put into use. However, says Putin, talking to Russia from a position of force is an exercise in futility, and that applies even when Russia was crippled by domestic hardships, as in the 90s and early 2000s. And now we get to the part about Chechnya, which indicates the gravity of the current strategic crisis. We... And we'll get to that in our next segment here on World Crisis Radio for the 5th of December, St. Nicholas Day on Saturday. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. We're taping on the afternoon of Friday, December 12th. Sorry, December 5th. But uh, the program will be broadcast on Saturday, December 6th. And that's St. Nicholas uh, from what is now Turkey. So we're always getting back to the Middle East. Uh, in the case of Putin's State of the Nation 
address, uh, it's very clear how a Russian leader, especially Putin, would see this attack in Grozny. Uh, and here is what he says. We remember well how and who, almost openly, supported separatism back then and even outright terrorism in Russia, referred to murderers whose hands were stained with blood as nothing but rebels and organized high-level receptions for them. Now, if you don't know what that was, get your copy of... 9-11 9-11 synthetic terror made in USA and read the part about the Beslan school and the Russian press reaction to the Beslan school, which was simply that uh, this had this was a massacre manufactured on the banks of the Thames and the Potomac. And that one of the key people who always comes up in this is Ilyas Akhmadov, paid by the State Department sitting here in Washington, D.C., ambassador of a terrorist organization, according to uh, many findings. And you'll see there was a whole debate on Johnson's Russia list and all these uh, places you can find them. So, So Putin says, these rebels, in quotes, have shown up in Chechnya again. I'm sure the local guys, the local law enforcement authorities will take proper care of them. They are now working to eliminate another terrorist raid. Let's support them. Then he gets back to this question of the receptions. Let me reiterate. We remember high-level receptions for terrorists dubbed as fighters for freedom and democracy. This is Zbigniew Brzezinski. I'm sorry. Back then, we realized that the more ground we give and the more excuses we make, the more our opponents become brazen and the more cynical and aggressive their behavior becomes. Despite our uh, openness, unprecedented openness back then, we tried to treat people as close friends and even allies. What we got was support for separatism in Russia from across the pond, U.S., including information, political and financial support provided by the special services, CIA, Spetslujb means CIA, CRU, get the idea? was absolutely obvious, left no doubt that they would gladly let Russia follow the Yugoslav scenario of disintegration and dismemberment. We all remember the tragic, with all the tragic fallout for the people of Russia. It didn't work. We didn't allow that to happen. Just as it did not work for Hitler with his people-hating ideas, who set out to destroy Russia and push us back beyond the Urals. Everyone should remember how it ended. Yes. Next year, we will mark the 70th anniversary of victory in the Great Patriotic War, the Second World War. Our army crushed the enemy and liberated Europe. However, we should not forget about the bitter defeats of 1941 and 42, so as not to repeat those mistakes in the future. And then... From here, he goes right on to the next issue, the ABM Treaty. The U.S. unilaterally denounced the ABM Treaty in 2002. This had been absolutely a cornerstone of international security, strategic balance of forces and stability. The U.S. has been working relentlessly to create a global missile defense system, including in Europe. This is a threat not only to Russia, but to the world as a whole, precisely due to the possible disruption of the strategic balance of forces and it is bad for the u.s as well there's more much more in putin's speech i'd hope to get back to it what you see here is a document of economic dirigism state intervention organizing for example a national technology initiative that will essentially reinvest 25 percent of the gross domestic product of russia in modern technology. And what do we have here? We have lunatic Republicans who are blinded by their racism and their xenophobia. And Obama's answer to this is more free trade. The giant sucking sound is back. All those jobs leaving. That's the answer to being number two. And of course, we want to know from all the all the uh, the loudmouth chauvinists. What happened to your exceptionalism, huh? Exceptionalism can be there, but you got to earn it. You got to fight for it, and you guys are not fighting for it. 
you're fighting for your own filthy greed. Uh, a couple of other things now. Let's just put this um, this attack in a bit of uh, of context um, concerning the, uh, the the New York Times actually recommends that you read something called the Caucasian Knot. K N O T. The Caucasian Knot, an authoritative website that talks about uh, these uh, events. It's that this is now the third big attack this year, and up to now, 290 people have been killed and 144 wounded in terrorist attacks in Chechnya through the end of November. And, of course, the guy that Putin relies on here is uh, Kadyrov. So Kadyrov was in St. George's Hall in the Kremlin for the Putin address, and he was looking at his uh, his cell phone. What does he have, a BlackBerry or whatever he has? And, uh, well, uh, keeping up with the uh, the events. Um, so uh, the other big thing, of course, and this, this I think, is, is actually the headline – is this ISIS? Yes, it's probably ISIS. It's in the sense that it's probably people who are going to be calling themselves ISIS. And uh, that's the word, for example, the Carnegie Moscow Center. Dmitry Trenin says on Twitter, the night attack in Grozny looks senseless except as an attempt to embarrass Putin hours before his annual address to parliament. And Trenin and others speculate that this may have been the debut of the Islamic State known as ISIS. Well, why do we believe that? We've reported here the many threats coming from ISIS saying we're going to go on and attack Russia through Chechnya, clearly. Uh, we had, you can go on the internet and find pictures of uh, ISIS crazies sitting in Syrian Air Force planes of Russian manufacture and boasting that they're going to go and bomb uh, Moscow, right? Now, these are, up so far, people who don't know how to fly them. And remember that Russia is directly involved in the sense that back in July, when it looked like Iraq might be rolled over, they need, the Iraqi government needed some planes right away. The U.S. was way too slow. Russia delivered uh, some used uh, Sukhoi uh, fighter bombers in there, and they have uh, gone on to make quite a difference. We'll have a, just a little bit more about this. Uh, ISIS attacks Russia in Chechnya, and that fulfills the design of the uh, CIA geostrategic Okay, welcome back to World Crisis Radio, Webster Topley from Washington, D.C. Please remember that the, uh, the announced uh, course, uh, Political Economy of the American System, uh, it will now most likely occur in the Washington, D.C. area around the middle of January. Uh, please stay tuned. We'll announce that at tarpley.net. We'll announce that on um, Webster G. Tarpley Twitter feed and, of course, here on the on the weekly broadcast, uh, ISIS attacks Russia. This we have talked about uh, in previous weeks. Uh, it's coming up now because of this attack. At this, it, it's still it still hasn't been claimed, but I think that's just a question of time. Anyway, if you're in the Kremlin, you got to assume these, this is it's the same as ISIS, whether it's actually. Al Qaeda or Nusra. It's all the CIA. CIA Arab Legion, CIA Islamic Legion attacking Russia under the name of ISIS. And this has got to be stopped for here in the United States, thanks to the tender care of Zbigniew Brzezinski and others. And uh, of course, we remember that in the Boston bombing, Uncle Ruslan was married to the daughter of uh, Graham Fuller of the CIA, presumably one of the handlers of people coming from that neck of the woods. Just last year, we had Doku Umarov, Chechen terrorist leader, killed. And remember that his threat to coincide with the State of Russia, State of the Nation uh, address, which Putin was holding then in the Kremlin uh, so this, you could see a, a big building in the center of town was seized. It was shot to pieces, burning. 
uh, damaged buildings all over the place uh, and so forth. So it is a huge challenge. And as we'll see, it's the third in the course of the uh, the last year. I urge you to get out your copy of Obama, the postmodern coup, the making of a Manchurian candidate, 2008, by yours truly. Go to Tarpley.net and order it immediately. In here, we find the story of Ilyas Akhmadov, the ambassador of the Chechen terrorist organization, which uh, had him as essentially an ambassador huge strategic emergency which is now uh becoming clear in the last uh 36 hours we've had a fierce attack by islamist militants in the capital of chechnya chechenia and about 20 are dead these are um islamist suicide bombers uh and this event was timed assessor as the boss of this entire thing. Basayev was one of the most notorious CIA agents anywhere in the world. So I'm saying this because if you're reading this from the Russian point of view, when you see mil- uh, Islamist crazies attacking in Chechnya, you think right away, CIA, MI6. And indeed, sure enough, let's see what, what Putin had to say about this in that uh, that speech.